Let's go on a pizza making spree, y'all. Beautiful people, welcome to Nanabe's Kitchen. I hope you're having a fantastic day so far. Let's make it even more fantastic because today I'm bringing you not one, not two, but three solid and amazing pizza sauces that can go on your pizza, your homemade pizza, that is. The white, the red, and the green. Italian flat colors. We ain't playing today, friends. So fasten your seat belts and let's jump right in. We are starting with the red sauce and you need one heaping tablespoon of tomato paste. Next, you need a 32 ounce can of plum tomatoes and this one happens to have basil in it so it's already fragrant. We will be needing some chopped onion followed by four cloves of garlic and then for a little bit of a kick, we're going to use some dry red chili flakes. And for sweetness, we need a teaspoon of granulated sugar, two teaspoons of dry oregano, one teaspoon of dry parsley, salt and pepper to taste, two tablespoons of olive oil to cook the marinara. Now, we're going to crush our plum tomatoes because as you can see, they come in the hole. So I go in with an immersion blender and just crush them, not too smooth, all right? So there's a little bit of chunk and that's totally fine. Now we have our pan, our saucepan is on medium heat. Two tablespoons of the olive oil go in, followed by the onions, which we're just going to cook until they are softened. The garlic will get grated in right now. It's a good time to go in with your dry chili flakes so they have a chance to be rehydrated. That means that their fragrance and their taste will be swiftly released into the sauce. So you're going to cook this for about a minute or until the onions are softened or everything becomes fragrant. Then you go in with the tomato paste. Now that you're going to fry for two minutes with all the ingredients in the pan. What you want to see is for the mixture to become sort of a thick jam consistency. And there you have it. So two minutes should do it. Then you're gonna go in with the crushed plum tomatoes. Stir everything in. Our dry herbs are also gonna be joining the pot very soon. And then we'll continue to cook on medium heat for about 10 minutes, just to concentrate the flavors and also to reduce the sauce a little bit. Now add your dry oregano, followed by the dry parsley. Also your sugar can go in now. Yes, friends, sugar is a very important ingredient in your marinara. Marinara must not only have a savory character to itself, it has to also have a background hint of sweetness. Now you're going to season with your crushed black pepper and your salt to taste. Now that we have combined all of our ingredients we began with, we just need to allow the reduction to occur. And that should happen on low, medium heat. If your um, sauce is splattering, use a splatter guard. Don't use a lid because that will develop steam and create more moisture. But our goal is to reduce the marinara and also concentrate its flavors. That thickness, that consistency and the texture looks perfect to me. So we're done. We'll turn the stove off and we are ready to use this sauce, which you can also can, by the way. If you haven't seen my canning video, please check it out. Search for Nanabis Kitchen Canning 101. This marinara recipe is a winner. I'm telling you, friends, you will love it. So please try it. I hope you're inspired by it. And now let me demonstrate how to use this beautiful marinara sauce on this homemade pizza crust. Homemade with a professional touch. Friends, at this point, I'd like you to tell me, how do you like your pizza sauce? Do you like a lot of it or you like to go light? 
For me personally, I prefer it light, but my children, give them the sauce. Just give it to them. Now let's make our green pesto sauce. My personal favorite. Friends, you begin with the freshest of basil leaves that you can find, with emphasis on fresh. You also need some pine nuts if you want to stay true to the authentic original pesto recipe. You're also going to need your Parmesan cheese, followed by three cloves of garlic. You also need a cup of very good extra virgin olive oil, followed by the juice of half a lemon or lime. You need the acid in there, it keeps things fresh. Then you need to season with your salt and good old crushed black pepper. That is all she wrote for the ingredients. No cooking involved in making pesto. Just combine your oil and your garlic. Blend that first so that way you're sure that the garlic has been blended nicely. Also add your acid at this point and blend up. Our goal is to crush all of the garlic cloves, so that looks smooth, doesn't it? Now go in with the rest of the ingredients. So we have the basil in, and now we're adding the pine nuts, which, by the way, you can substitute with any nut you like, pistachios, almonds, cashews, whatever you prefer. Walnuts, just whatever. Now go in with the Parmesan cheese. Now keep in mind that Parmesan cheese is salty in taste, it's very savory because it has sodium in it. So keep that in mind when you go into season with your salt and crushed black pepper. So I only use a pinch of salt and crushed black pepper to taste. Now you're gonna go in with your olive oil. The second and last half of the olive oil, we use the first one to crush the garlic. This pesto sauce happens to be my favorite for several reasons. One of them is that I don't even have to cook it, and yet the results are just as delicious, friends. It's fresh, it's vibrant in color, and the fresh smell of basil really does something to my soul. I love it. And look at how vibrant the, the green color is. Beautiful. So here, I'm applying it to some homemade pizza dough. We're getting ready to throw some pizza down. So I apply a generous amount of it and make sure it's all spread out. I'm just, just showing you how I would use it in hopes that you will be inspired by it. And as you know, with pizza, you can use any topping combination you love. This one is caprese inspired. So we have our basil, pesto, and our green and red tomatoes. Lovely, now let's make the final sauce, our white sauce. Bechamel inspired. You need three tablespoons of unsalted butter, followed by three tablespoons of all-purpose flour, three tablespoons of minced white onion, three tablespoons of Parmesan cheese, two cloves of garlic, which we will be grating into the sauce pretty soon. You need two cups of whole milk, and you can substitute with a non-dairy milk. Just make sure it isn't flavored. Now, you're also going to need your salt and crushed black pepper to taste. Let's cook. So, on a medium-low heat, we're going to melt the unsalted butter to begin with. And it is crucial that this butter only gets melted. We do not want to turn it into brown butter, so make sure you keep an eye on it so it doesn't burn. Then go in with the minced onion and also grate your garlic in right at this moment. Then cook on the same heat setting until all the ingredients in here are aromatic and fragrant. Then add the all-purpose flour which you're going to cook for at least two minutes two minutes is enough time to cook out that raw taste that flour presents with the flour in addition to the butter will clump up like this 
but do not worry that is the normal occurrence so you're what you're going to do now is add the milk once the milk goes in use a whisk to combine both components what you want is for it to become clumpless or clump free and also start to thicken into a creamy white very luscious velvety texture then add the parmesan cheese into it stir that also in to achieve the same texture and consistency then you're going to add your salt and crushed black pepper next see that is a very good texture I love it now make, make sure you're tasting if you don't want to add the salt then don't okay all right because the, the Parmesan cheese does already have salt in it so it's a matter of preference here at this point and we are done friends that is all she wrote here too now look at that white sauce yes you don't always have to use the red sauce as my good friend says variety is the spice of life i brought you not one not two but three amazing pizza sauces now this one here also i love why because it's creamy it is rich and it is flavorful friends you would love 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 this one too it is buttery and nutty yeah it, great flavors you'd love this on pasta on pizza just whatever and yeah all three sauces shared today can be applied in so many different ways yeah any pasta dish you can get really creative with all three recipes friends so i'm applying it to pizza because that's the theme today and i have my pizza dough homemade and i'm just spreading this generously on here and and you can just get really creative with the toppings as well some mozzarella cheese i'm also going to add some italian sausage that has been cooked up my children love pepperoni so i'm going to add that as well and then some peppers some onions some olives whatever topping you love just get creative i hope you've learned a thing or two and are inspired to try all three of these beautiful recipes make it a great day and have fun especially in that kitchen thank you beautiful crescent for watching the video all the way to the end kindly leave me a comment and subscribe down below and don't forget to share the video as well also watch more videos it is chop time and here in anava's kitchen chop time is always yes friend so pull up a chair we are all friends and family here.